Hey everybody, it's another This Week in Nano, where we get to hang out with some members of the core team of Nano and learn what they're up to, and also get a little update from the community. So uh, today we've got Troy, Roy, and Brian. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves and tell us what you do. Hey everybody, I'm Troy. I do public relations for Nano. I'm Roy. I do software development for Nano. Uh, and I'm Brian, um, heading the Nano Center. Sweet. Brian, thanks for joining us. thought you could open us up today. Uh, you're coming to us from Iceland uh, with your little Wi-Fi hotspot. So thanks for going above and beyond to come tell us a little, about, a little bit about what's going on with the Nano Center. There's no, no vacations for Nano. Nope. No. Mm -mm. This is a 24-7 non-paying job. That's it. <laughs> it's great. So, uh, what's going on in the Nano Center? Um, we've had a pretty interesting uh, week. We uh, just completed the competition. Uh, I think it was back on the fifth. I guess it was eight days ago now um, for our video, uh, the Thunder one. Some people might know him on the Discord. Um, it was a tough decision with the judges. Colin, George, and Jay uh, did their best to come down to the winner they found one um i think we're pretty happy with the video so we're gonna hopefully put that on the site eventually going forward um other than that we have a few things in the works uh tomorrow we are releasing a proposal that we actually put up on the red uh it's the subreddit nano currency if anyone wants to take a look uh, four more video proposals uh is the hope that we're going for here um similar prizes similar structure um just to get community involvement you know the idea is that eventually we can get a really nice bank uh, of tutorials, how to's, that kind of thing for just your average um, amateur investor who's looking to get into the space because I think that's something um, really helpful that uh, somebody new into the area really needs. So um, we have that coming in tomorrow. So that should be. Um, other than that, still redesigning the website. Hopefully that will come out in the next couple of weeks. Um, that we should have a few larger uh, proposals coming out. Yeah, those videos were great. Like literally any one of those could have won. They were above and beyond what I was kind of expecting. Um, really enjoyed those. And uh, those everybody that won will be getting a ledger, branded custom branded ledger next week, I believe. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll keep keep at it. But yeah, like you said, the education stuff and just providing the um, resources for uh, new users to learn about Nano is just key, super important, like really what we want to be doing. Yeah, I thought those videos were really awesome too. Um, and I'm excited to see what comes out of this new contest. Um, what are the, what's the best way for people to get connected with the Nano Center and get involved? Yeah, thanks for asking. Um, so one really good way is just, you know, on the currency subreddit you can dm us anytime we are active there we do read the messages frequently um discord is right now just the easiest way though it's really good for what it is uh hop on there DM on there message any of the channels they're all read all the time um it's a really active community and your message isn't going to get lost so uh i encourage anyone to you know contact us if you're interested in the competition enter a video you know, we saw, like they were alluding to a minute ago, the quality was higher than we even expected, but um, we think we can keep pushing forward to higher and higher quality content. Um, so if you're interested at all, or if you're just interested in helping, you know, I encourage you to jump on board. Um, we'd love to have you. Sweet. Um, is there anything else you wanted to add before we let you go back to your uh, Icelandic adventure? No, that is it. It's uh, pitch black out here, and I'm going to make some dinner. So thanks for having me on. Um, hope you guys have a good night. Thanks, Brian. Until next week. Anything for you, Troy. I'll see you guys. <laughs> see you later. Thanks. All right. All right well, uh, let's move right on to what's going on in the development of Nano. Roy, you want to fill us in on 15.2, 16, and so on? Sure. We uh, released version 15.2 a while back. Um, it has support for vote by hash, as well as epoch blocks and the preliminary, preliminary support for the server side of uh, lazy bootstrapping, as well as a lot of work on fixing the wallet um, mechanism that was a 
refactor by Colin and a lot of other miscellaneous cleanups went into that. Uh, after that came out, we were we were still working on 16 when that was being tested on the beta network. And so we did more work on version 16. Uh, we discovered after releasing version 15.2 that there was a problem on rebroadcasting votes in um, version 15 on the main network. Uh, we didn't see it on the beta network since it was much smaller and everybody was really tightly connected. So rebroadcasting wasn't, uh, wasn't a problem. Everybody pretty much got everything the first time around. On the main network, things are a little bit more um, disconnected. Things are disparate, rather. And so rebroadcasting was just causing the vote by hash never to show up to a lot of nodes. And they ended up needing to uh, fall back to the you know, old style voting mechanism. Uh, we fixed that in version 16. And that, that'll cause an increased traffic while uh, those votes are relayed as well as the old style votes. And that'll go down as more notes up to 16. A um, lot of other work went into 16, but that was the most notable feature is fixing vote by hash. So how's, uh, so how's the vote by hash working so far? Uh, as of this morning, there were 350,000 regular vote blocks and 75,000 vote by hash blocks. And uh, those 75,000, the majority of them contain more than one vote. Um, so I'm, I haven't broken down the ratio to see which had more votes, but uh, the benefit of vote by hash is that fewer blocks are needed for or confirming the same number of blocks. So there's a lot of savings there. And it's just gonna be as, as more people get updated? Right, as more people upgrade to version 16, then those blocks can get rebroadcast throughout the network and you don't have to have as many old style elections, um, which are really inefficient. So we'll have the vote hash become the dominant one over time. And that'll make things a little bit better. Yeah, I knew that there's there's still a couple of the bigger representatives that haven't um, upgraded to 16. So I think we'll be seeing it more over the next week. Um, we'll do a couple call actions over the weekend to get everybody, make sure everybody's um, updating, um, and then we'll just keep tracking it. Sweet. One question I had is, uh, you know, the rebroadcasting thing that you said it wasn't working right. Um, when 15.2 first came out, like my fear would be that everything would just stop working, but apparently you guys had something built in so that it would keep going. So what was that? That's the fallback mechanism that's always been there for votes that don't get confirmed initially. There's a secondary fallback mechanism that kicks in so that it tries harder. And with vote by hash, we just left that as the old style um, the mechanism so that if nodes didn't support uh, vote by hash, they would try to try to negotiate a lower protocol. It would be much more uh, inefficient, but they would still be able to have some sort of connectivity. Yeah, that was the important part is that nothing ever stopped working. You know, the vote by hash, it didn't come on correctly. And, you know, now we have that all fixed in 16, but the network never stopped working or um, anything like that. So that was the, the plus out of the whole thing. Yeah, if it had stopped working, we did have a plan in place to uh, fall back to disabling that if we needed to. But uh, since everything was going still, even though we could tell when, we knit, when the uh, epoch clicked over, uh, we were monitoring the network to see what, what the packets were gener being generated looked like. And uh, we could tell that they weren't coming in correctly, but we, couldn't. we were trying to work out why. And we could see that the regular old style votes were being generated. And so we didn't we didn't try to fall back. Okay, so now that we got 16 out, you want to give everybody a little idea of what is coming next in the protocol? Uh, the next thing we're working on in version 17 is um, lazy bootstrapping is the primary change. Uh, we did also have a vote stapling plan for version 17, but I've moved that to version 19 because it's probably not going to be ready uh, and stable for version 17. And I want to use version 18 as a cleanup release where we try and just do quality improvements and 
go through and close all the old bugs and close all the old pull requests or um, either by merging them or by just finding out what we can learn from them if there's a, if they can't be directly merged. So, um, so, la so lazy bootstrapping is the very next thing we're working on that'll improve the user experience a lot as well as reduce network util uh, utilization. A lot of the representatives, I know the official representatives in particular will be greatly uh, improved by that. Sweet. Well, uh, thanks for that update. Is there anything else you wanted to add on before we move on to adoption? Uh, I think the only thing I want to talk about was uh, version numbering. I saw there were some questions on how we did version numbering, how do we decide what is version 16 or what is version 15.3. I know there have been questions about that internally. And the way we do that is we just work on a major version at a time. So everything um, that we do is in our version control system, which is Git. And so we you know, merge all of our changes when they're ready into the master branch. And then at some point, we branch that off into a release branch like version 16. And then development continues on the master branch for the next release, as well as for the ongoing release uh, version 16, for example, and version 17, they're both developed uh, concurrently. And then changes that go into the master branch that are destined to be backported to one of our ongoing uh, supported branches. For example, we're testing version 16 on the beta network. We haven't done the final release. We're at the release candidate stage. Uh, those will get ported over to that branch while others that are destined for the next release will stay on the master branch and not get ported over. Um, so the, how we decide what is a major release and what is um, a patch release is really about how we do that branching and merging. And so when there's, when there's a release, it's going to be a major release. And if there's a bug fix or something that we need to do to support an existing release, uh, that's going to be a patch release. Sweet. And you're also implementing a new system of uh, doing like a quality control release um, after each major release. Well, it's not necessarily after each major release, um, but we're trying to have at least periodic uh, releases that don't have any changes to functionality and don't add any new features, but just clean things up. Um, and that's what we're targeting version 18 for. It's awesome. Great. Thanks, Ben. Yep. That's really cool. All right, Troy, there's been a lot going on uh, with uh, Nano and the world. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what's been happening? Yeah, we've had a lot going on. You know, today we had um, London Block Exchange with their long-awaited uh, launch. You know, we did the uh, treasure hunt with them in August, kind of build up a little hype, and uh, they were able to launch today. So um, gives us a nice fiat pair in the UK for all of our uh, UK users. Um, we want to push for these fiat on ramps to be accessible for everyone. So we're going to keep doing that, make sure that anywhere around the world can just easily access Nano. But this is a great um, kind of our, I would say our biggest uh, fiat on ramp at this point. Um, we also saw Brain Blocks yesterday uh, announced that they were, they're, they're looking into doing a fiat on ramp. So we'll have to see what they can, uh, they can develop, but that's uh, certainly exciting. You know, they're a big part of our ecosystem. Um, Pad. And I noticed that they had an interesting affix on their name, so people can uh, draw whatever conclusions they like from that. That's right. Um, we had the, the Bitcoin Superstore. They released their, uh, I guess I wouldn't call it rankings, but the, the use of you know, who's using what coins to buy stuff on their store. And after Bitcoin, we were number one, um, which, I mean, beating out a, a couple altcoins with much uh, larger market caps than us. Um, which just shows that, you know, that's, that's what we're for. We're for transacting, we're for payments. Um, that's what the whole coin is built for. That's, it's a currency. Um, you know, we're not, we're not doing D apps. We're not doing anything like that. Just, it's just doing transactions. Um, so super exciting, very cool to see. Hopefully we can uh, get some more stats from them in the future. Um, let's see, last week we did, we had the pay to Mac guys that are, have a POS terminal. Uh, they've already integrated Nano into their uh, POS terminal. I believe they're in, in Eastern Europe, um, and they have a number of vendors already signed up for their POS system. 
And we didn't even win. What's that about? So we were already integrated on the terminal, right? So that's why I wasn't as concerned about the whole competition. We had already been uh, integrated in the terminal. Uh, the, the competition that they held was for their native wallet, the next coin to add. So we had a nice little day long rivalry with Z coin. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I thought once I tweeted it out from our main account and I think I got like a 500 votes in like four minutes, you know, they were all screaming uh, bots and whatnot. And I thought we had it locked up and I really kind of stopped paying attention. And all of a sudden I saw we were back in second. So uh, we had a lot of fun. Uh, Ruben from Z coin was great. Uh, it was, it was, it was a lot of fun though. And telegram. Um, what else do we got going on? Let's see. Oh, that's a lot of stuff. Got okay, the new desktop wallet version was released. Um, and we'll just, we're just continuing to push these exchanges, uh, try to, you know, push, build out the ecosystem, these POS systems, um, fiat on ramps, um, just anything that we can get, you know, to kind of make nano easier to use and more accessible to uh, anyone in the world. All right. Well, uh, thanks so much for coming on and giving us a little update. We look forward to next week or whenever the next time we can get together is and uh, continuing to see what's coming. Yeah. Hopefully the schedules keep working out and we can get these out every week. That's the plan. You know, sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't work out, but uh, that's the goal. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, sometimes I mess things up and we just have to do it another week. So you can blame it on me guys. Sorry. That's right. <laughs> Never. Thank you everyone. All right. See